warm good evening everybody i cordially welcome you all to the episode 77 of the right with us group under the lee phoenix literature festival uh, banner so we are back here with yet another session which is going to be on children's stories or the world of children's stories we are so happy to see that our last session social media boon or bane for writers was very well received by the audience and we got very good feedback on social media so to give you a gist of what is this uh, write with us group i would like to say that write with us is a literary group which was formed in the year 2020 so the main intention of our group is to provide a supporting platform for the authors for aspiring writers storytellers to come out with their own ideas and translate those ideas to beautiful stories novels blogs and so on we are a proud family of more than 100 members from across six countries so so far we have conducted two literature festival number one we have conducted one literature festival uh, in the year 2020 in october and the second one very recently in august 2021 we had eminent authors eminent film makers publishers from across the world joining us to name a few some of them were manjiri prabhu indranil mukherji ketan bhagat and so on we are looking forward to holding such and more and more enriching literature festivals in the future so coming back to our session today which will be on the world of children's stories as a child we all as a child we all loved stories we all grew up watching or some stories on tvs listening to stories from our grandparents from our teachers from our parents and so on what is it that the stories are so special that it will leave a lasting impression on all of us what makes the story special and what goes into the making of a story how are the characters designed how should be the dialogue flow to discuss all these aspects we have three panelists joining us today they are still joining us let's wait for them to join us till they are joining us i will be giving a brief introduction of all the three panelists you can see the uh, banner coming up here number 1 is ginny stone ginny is a writer based out of south africa she's joining us all the way from south africa and she is an avid writer of children's books and she has more than 15 books of children to her credit i remember contributing one of my short story to her book that is a children's book the three hours and not just writing uh, uh, stories she also designs posters for children games for children and we are so so happy to have jinny on board with us today let's give a big round of applause and let's welcome jinny to the panel discussion we welcome you jinny to the show we are so happy to have you here thank you very much devi i very much appreciate being invited and being here thank you thank you thank you jinny the next uh, panelist he on the way and he is rahul sharma and the third panelist is anandika sood anandika has joined us let me give a brief introduction of anandika sood and she is a creative writer by passion and profession and she has written for major national dailies like dainik baskar and indian express and she also have a blog where she writes about parenting about books and writing in general so we are so happy to have anandika here with us and we would love to hear her views on the topic today let's give a big round of applause and let's welcome anandika sood to the sh- this panel discussion welcome anandika thank you devi your uh, your enthusiasm is infectious lovely to have <laughs> you introduce us such hello everyone hi jini good to see you hi anandika <laughs> 
So I will just give a brief uh, introduction of the third panelist who will be shortly joining us in two three minutes. He is Rahul Sharma. So we all know Rahul Sharma as he is a avid writer of children's books. He has ten books of best selling books written for children, and he is a public speaker. He is an award winning marketer, and he is mainly the founder of Write with Us Group. so he's working with a startup as team a uh, chief business officer so rahul will be joining us shortly but let's give a big round of applause and let's also welcome rahul sharma now let us get started with this panel discussion so unlike other panel discussions this panel discussion will be spread out over four rounds so we'll be having four rounds in this panel discussion the first round is the initial thoughts the first let me start from jinni jinni i would like to know from you how was your journey so far of writing children's books so how did you start off and how has the journey been so far um thanks devi thanks for that question it was quite interesting to begin with because i i wrote my first book and i sent it or my first story and i sent it to a a, a person who who's published some children's stories in cape town and she told me i couldn't write for toffee and she didn't know why i'd written on the subject of global warming so i put the story aside in my computer for probably 6 months and then i started chatting to another guy later and he said to me well he'd like to read my story and i sent it to him and he said no it's lovely you must send it to to um another publishing or, or i must go look on the uh, publishing association of south africa's website so i found four publishers and the first one i sent it to they said to me no thank you they didn't like it so i said well you don't like it because it's horrible or you don't like it because you just don't want to publish this and they said to me no 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 we do like it it's not horrible we just don't want to publish this and then i sent it off to um other publishers and they came back the same day and this is the first uh in my series of books and there are now 16 in the series so it just wow. goes to show never give up <laughs> <laughs> that's that's very interesting uh, to yeah. know your story jenny and i have observed that you make use of children's books mainly to send across good very good messages like environmental causes the book that i contributed to like did it happen consciously or was it a part of evol- evolution of your writing for children's books how did this happen taking up important messages Okay so when I I used to work in a science facility where we did outreach and so when I wrote my first book about global warming there weren't very many resources for children on the subject of global warming this was back in 2007 and mm-hmm. so I thought oh but I'm going to write a fun book for kids because this is a whole different story but our kids in South Africa don't read and they can't read a lot of them and so i thought well let me do this and i'll do this and see how it goes and um it it just works you know a book gets read so many times so if you don't get the message the first time you'll get something and then you'll read it again and you'll get the next thing and 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 it just sticks around forever so i i believe you know my tagline is empowering children one page at a time and i want them to learn and i want them to learn in a fun way that's how i do it but that's just these yeah. books I, i also write rubbish as you know from jack the hooligan cat <laughs> <laughs> that's that's very interesting jenny the tagline i really liked your tagline empowering children one page at a time so yeah. now coming to anandika sood how has been your journey of writing and how do you view this uh, uh, children's writing so you can just tell your story you know journey of writing so far uh um, devi i uh, i haven't per se written for children but i think i've written for their parents based on my experience as a parent uh, of two children again uh, very unique in the sense because of the different genders 
a boy and a girl and uh, a, a difference a huge difference in their ages so my daughter is 13 and my son is uh, 7 so um i have written uh, a lot about uh, reading unabridged classics and i might sound like um, like uh, probably uh, uh, not not probably the most <laughs> the correct person to talk on this but then i am i am hugely in favor of stories and i agree with uh, what jini just now said that you know every time you read a book you come out with something else every time the lesson the learning is different so as far as writing is concerned my own writing has been more about children reading than per se about stories for children you know it's mm-hmm. it is it, with, because of my own journey as a parent and as a voracious reader whose children did not really take to reading um i think my my journey has been about finding an echo with parents who who aspired or you know in that way looked for uh, for material somehow that will catch their child's fancy and that will be like the game changer and suddenly the child child is reading and reading and reading but then with my own self my own children i've seen this that um i'm a huge uh, consumer of fiction and when i say fiction i i mean uh literature of all sorts pulp fiction everything 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 and i have a daughter who who does not want to read fiction the only thing she wants to read is non fiction so you know for <laughs> me it has been a very important point to bring out that you know you, it can all not all children's uh books can only be about stories you know about fancy uh fantasy and magic and everything of course i'm sure children love that as 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 a as a thing across the world but then there are these kinds as well who would rather read about um uh, uh, about the silk route you know or about the grand trunk road or like maybe what has been jinis theme global warming so i think that is what my writing and my uh, experience with children stories has been so stories you cannot really put them in a box and say that this is a story but this isn't a story right right that's a, this is very interesting take uh, nandika like you write for children's parents and yes that uh, parents all they have a very major impact on the children's way of thinking when they adopt the stories and so on that brings me to my next question to jini that is uh, when do you think is the right time to introduce stories to children Uh well Devi you know from Instagram that I have a very small uh grandchild Rollo who lives with us um and I started reading stories to him when he was about 3 months old um mm-hmm. he just really looked at the pictures but obviously <laughs> and I mean I just really looked at the pictures but I don't think you can ever start too early I think if you can instill yeah. a love of reading in children when they're as young as possible then you've got them for life On the other hand, I don't think you must force them because then they'll hate it and they won't want to read it. So it's got to be a fun experience. Right. That's that's very interesting. You started reading for a child who's the three months old. That's that's very interesting. I would like to take the same question to Anandika. When do you think is the right time to introduce stories to the children? I absolutely agree with what Jini said. There's you cannot ever be early enough. um uh, my sister was carrying uh, her daughter last year and you know i was the day i got the news i think i did i did not even congratulate her <laughs> properly <laughs> for going to become mama but i told her that you must now start treating because i know she's she's not a she's not a reader reader so i told her that whatever else you might do or might not do i am not interested in that but you have to start reading and i don't care what you read uh, it can be a newspaper article you read a book you read a poem anything but you have to just fix your time sit down in a place and start reading <laughs> so i absolutely agree um and like i said i do not characterize reading only with stories um which which take uh, a root from from an idea or a fantasy only everything can be a story and everything can be told to children it's just how you tell it to them that matters and that that is probably different 
so absolutely here with jini you cannot they, i mean from the first moment maybe <laughs> or maybe from the time you thought that okay now i'm ready for being a parent um, it's never too early to start and it, similarly on the other side it's never too late as well so i think mm-hmm. it's also about the personal journey you know when you realize that how impactful reading can be and what are the multiple benefits of reading uh, of course stories uh, as well you know the flights of fancy imagination creativity unending unending reasons to get into reading to get into stories to telling stories to narrating stories because i've worked as a storyteller also so mm-hmm. i can stop uh, listing the benefits of starting just start i would say just start wherever you are mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that's a very very interesting unanimous views of both the panelists it's never too early and it's never too late fair enough now coming to my next question uh, this is to jinni that is how exactly do you create a storytelling atmosphere at your home or at your workplace how do you create that a uh, conducive atmosphere for storytelling you have i am sure first hand experience of reading stories to your grandchild so how what is your take on it jenny oh i i don't believe in even creating a, an atmosphere i must be honest he comes in here i plunk him on my lap i've got uh, his two his two favorite books not written by me i must add that he he just sits he grabs we look we read um with my own children i always used to read to them at night time when they were about to go to bed and then i'd sit on the bed with them when they were all clean and smells all nice and you know kid like and still dirty little rats <laughs> and we'd sit on the bed and we'd read the story and they'd beg me for another chapter but with rollo i just grab him wherever he is and we sit we read on the bench outside on the swing on my lap on the in front of the tv um he really he does he like he sits and looks at those books and he listens and he knows what's coming on the next page which is so cute <laughs> you know he waits for the page and so i yeah i just i i know some people have these special story hours and they and they create silence and i i think you must be able to read anywhere so I, that that's how we do it <laughs> yeah the whether it's right or wrong i don't know yeah now i would take the same uh, question to anandika anandika what in your opinion like do, should we create a storytelling uh, atmosphere or how how would you go about with it the same uh, question to anandika anandika what in your i think the voice is echoing really okay. i'll come again i'll i'll just am i am i audible now clearly yes yes you are yes you are yes. sorry sorry for the interruption no yeah no yeah i was asking the same question that i asked to jinni do you feel like jinni this the need to create an atmosphere or it happens naturally like what is your your take on it um um having heard jinni's experience i would uh, say that um, uh, you know i am not really a great believer in creating creating a an atmosphere but i think you know it happens automatically it happens organically mm-hmm. somehow like she mentioned that she would read to her children at the end of the day which is a very common practice i think followed all across the world again mm-hmm. um it it never ceases to amaze me how similar we are um wherever we might be but coming back to the point um so i think storytelling is such an intimate uh, experience and an organic experience in itself that you know that atmosphere it starts to build up uh, to share something very personal so i have i've been telling stories as a storyteller for small kids for about 4 years 3 years now and when uh, the first wave of covid hit and everything went online i was very apprehensive uh, about taking my classes online mm-hmm. because i thought that you know uh, the children are already uh, getting too much exposure to the to the screen and uh, you know I, i i often think in terms of my own children and then take a call on it as a parent so i thought that you know nobody would want or maybe parents should not um, uh, take this activity as well on to the screen and i i did not uh, do the entire i went a year without any storytelling sessions 
but by the time the second uh, wave had arrived and we were devastated and we knew that this is going to continue like this i realized something else that the children are as it is going to go and sit in front of the screen so they might as well interact with a human being then you know just being passive uh, listeners or passive observers and that is when i finally decided to take my storytelling online for a while and everything um as far as creating an atmosphere is concerned so i've had this experience in both the places you know uh, when you begin to tell a story to a bunch of kids from different backgrounds different homes everything different there will be times when when somebody will settle down immediately you know they would want to listen to it but uh, even if there is a child who's not who's not hooked right at the beginning storytelling is such a thing uh, and i think the story the person who's telling the story has that power to bring it um, bring them into that fold so it is a very calming experience so whether or not you create that conducive atmosphere whether they or not uh, you are working towards creating that uh, for example there are certain uh, schools of storytelling the, th- those who believe in reading the text those who believe in uh, uh, using uh, using dolls and other medium to convey a story lighting a candle uh, uh, removing all sorts of distractions there are there's different uh, schools of storytelling as well but then i think at the end of the day the process is such that it becomes very conducive to a heart to heart conversation or you know or of of passing on an on of an idea um, that you really don't have to work hard on building or creating that atmosphere it just comes to be so yes yes that's that's very interesting to know both your views how it comes naturally and that atmosphere get uh, created so my next question is to jenny as to you have seen this first hand again with your grants and how the stories shape the personality of children especially when they are introduced at a very young age in your grants and it was from 3 months old how what changes do you see in them and how do you see that personality is getting molded with the stories i'm not actually sure that that yet we've got to that stage <laughs> because it's not even starting <laughs> yet but what i can say is from some of my experiences um i i i get invited to go to schools quite often well before covid obviously and i used to go and read civil books and then i would try and get them sponsored so i could leave some in the school and sometimes i would be sitting reading and i would look at the kids and i would think oh my gosh it's so boring that little boy over there is sleeping instead of listening to the story and then afterwards i always ask questions and the little boy who was sleeping leaps up and answers all the questions because he wants to win a book so i think that they they do definitely listen and they do take it in and they do learn from what they're reading with rollo mm-hmm. um i think he has add and i think he's going to be a bit of a challenge <laughs> as far as concentrating goes <laughs> he's only little though Mm-hmm. yeah that's yeah. that's that's uh, nice to take uh, put for that view uh, jenny anandika what is your take on like what you have see, uh, seen around with your own children how did the stories or children stories help them shape you know their personality and one one of your child is 13 and one is 7 how do you see their tra- you know transition in their personality like yeah, i think you're the best person to say <laughs> how did it uh, actually take place um uh, so like devi i said that my daughter is more into or has been rather more into uh non fiction uh than fiction so uh let me first start with her so i don't i i don't think uh, i am uh, right now in any position to say how it shapes her personality but what i can assuredly say is that it shapes her thought process Mm-hmm. you know um speaking to my own daughter and you know uh, i at times even i am um totally amazed by the kind of wide view that she has on a certain topic for example uh, she's a big history fan and i i also love history as a subject and we love reading about our country's history and a little bit of world history and everything so you know 
uh, stories those you can equally call them stories you know the invasions the 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 attacks the uh, commerce bit of it everything is a story so uh, that really shapes up how widely and what what perspective do you choose to adopt you know from a story so i think that is what stories uh, do to the child or the person whoever is reading them that they help you broaden your perspective widen your sphere of knowledge of course and <clears throat> and helps you choose you know it helps you choose between the right thing to do and the wrong thing to do for example uh, we've been aware of the colonization and how ruthlessly uh natives and aboriginals all over the world uh, were subjected uh, to uh, torture and things like that so you don't have to teach a child you know that this is wrong or this is right they can see it for themselves when they when they see that you know there was a there was a native plant that was completely uh destroyed the crop was destroyed and taken away just for gains so they they evaluate they learn this important skill to evaluate other information also you know based on that that knowledge i think that's that's the fantastic thing that stories do um and my son who is into fiction and who's into stories um i think yes stories again do the same job uh, your lessons are conveying conveying something important uh taking a a learning for a lifetime uh everything happens via stories so i'm sure they in in times to come he's just seven in times to come i i do hope to see that you know he's imbibed something uh, important and something nice and that is how his personality gets shaped he's kinder he's nicer gentler and a better human being altogether thanks to the yeah, stories yeah. we tell them yeah <laughs> that's that's wonderful to hear uh, anandika so we now come to the end of the first round of discussion that is the initial thoughts on the world of children's stories so let's give it up for our uh, panelists for having shared their wonderful inputs and i would also request the audience who have joined via facebook to keep dropping their questions on the facebook comment window you can ask any questions to the panelists Uh, as and when you drop the questions i'll be posing it to the panelists so keep let the questions keep coming so now we'll go to the round 2 the round 2 is pick and choose here i won't choose uh, the question here the panelists themselves will choose the question based on a numbering system so i'll start with jinni jinni you can choose any number from 1 to 10 okay 3 uh, Three, okay. Three, yes. So I have got an interesting question here. So you have picked a very interesting question. We have seen in children's stories that when we introduce characters in the form of animals, children tend to relate so much to them. So your take on it? So the an uh, telling the stories from the medium of animals is a is it a good way to get closer to the children's thoughts and children's ideas just i want to know your views on this uh, well i think so i i am a big fan of writing from an animal's point of view when i tell stories mm-hmm. as well so um yes because I, i think you can be a little bit silly sometimes and they mm-hmm. don't judge you know children don't judge really so much yes, yes. when it comes to what they're reading and so yeah i i think i think they can just enjoy it and just be and get into the whole story without worrying whether they're doing the right mm. thing or not or reading the right thing into it i mm. don't i don't know but like yeah that's how i think <laughs> that's that's wonderful i really agree with you jinni when we are children we don't judge anybody we are very innocent but when we grow up okay all the difficulties of the life that gets over us and we start judging the world So yeah. I now miss being a child. Sometimes I think I my childhood was so innocent, so wonderful. I think that's that's you put it right. That with medium of animals, the children don't judge and they take naturally what is coming to them. Thanks for the inputs, Jenny. Now it's time for Anandika to choose a number between one to ten, except for three. I'll go with five. 
Okay, five. <laughs> yes, five is again an interesting uh, question that you have picked. Should you make for child characters in a story so that children relate better? In the story, children as characters more than having adult characters. Children relate more to child characters. What is what is your take on it? Um, it would, uh, Devi, to be very honest, depend on the story that you are narrating. Again. of course if it is a story that uh, that that you need to uh, that you you making to put across a point uh, about a social issue or something like that then of course you have the you have the freedom probably to choose uh, choose your character mm-hmm. to be a child and you know convey it from the point of view of a child and how he or she views the world and how changes happen and how is uh, the child mm-hmm. and uh, a witness to whatever is happening but i don't think that you know um uh, uh it can solely be uh, based on children all together you would need the adult in- intervention uh, <laughs> to yeah. unfortunately as much as it might be but um, uh, i think uh, as far as human beings are concerned uh, they would need some adults around <laughs> Right, 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 right. Fair enough, fair enough, Jenny. I'll now go back to sorry, that was Anandika. I'll go no. back to Jenny again. It's time for you to pick a number, uh, Jenny, between one to ten, except three and five. I will have four. Okay, four. Yeah. Yes, four. I have got a very different question here. That is. when it comes to non fiction how to make it interesting for the young reader sometimes the topic can get really serious topics but even non fiction how do you make it interesting for the young readers um okay so so most of my books are are fiction based on fact okay so with the global mm-hmm. warming or nanotechnology chemistry all of those books i bring in the fact um actually well mm. the books are written in rhyme so it's it's it it's in a fun way but the facts are included in the storyline that that's how i do it mm-hmm. um i did write a blog in a newspaper for about 4 years and i always wrote on different mm. topics and then i would again make it fun you know so you make it something that's relatable that a child can do that they can understand not scary even if it is a scary topic you still dumb it down a bit but children are not stupid mm. so you can't dumb it down too much mm. but right. you have to approach it from a way that is gentle get honest and still fun to read because if it's boring they mm-hmm. just won't bother so that that's that's how i've done it yeah yes 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 fair enough uh, jenny to make the language relatable the characters relatable fair enough now going to anandika anandika you can pick your uh, number again from 1 to 10 but not 3 5 and 4 okay i will go with number 10 then wow <laughs> number 10 is yeah so here the question that you have got is innocence is a uh, you know value which is repeatedly being mentioned in children's literature Mm-hmm. so innocence do you think is one quality that makes the child unique and that which everyone can relate to i would agree with that you know because they are so um, there these blank slates the blank papers and um, uh, they would not know as much as probably i would know at my life at my age or you know now or maybe jini at a different age or you at a different age somebody else at a different age so yes um uh innocence of course uh, that is what makes us a yearn for being children back you know to not mm-hmm. know how mm-hmm. how everything can be manipulated and how everything can have an ulterior every other person can have an ulterior motive yes i think innocence is that one special quality yes 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 the innocence is one special quality that makes the children stand apart from everybody adults 
So that's that's yeah. the right take, Anandika. Again, coming to Jimmy, you can pick a number between one to ten, not three, five, four, and ten. I'll have seven, please, Devi. Seven, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Like I'm playing the seven. <laughs> seven is a very interesting question again. Do you decide the number of pages of a book based on the age group? is it how children's fiction is designed like based on a smaller age group they'll have less number of books or is it based on the idea so it does it go by the pages based on the age group criteria like jinny has a very good experience of writing children's books so i just want to know your views on this jinny okay, so so my take my my sibo series that i that that are published they are 36 pages for um for each mm. book right and they right, have right. three chapters and they've got 20 verses in each chapter and then mm. the back page has information about the story if you uh, the, the, the the guidelines when you are writing for kids is that for small children you've got pictures a lot of pictures a little bit of text when they get a little bit older you have more text less pictures and uh, like mm. uh, a middle grade adult or a middle grade novel would be up to about 50 or 70,000 words mm -hmm. and the kid is going to be reading that over a limit you know over a period of time so yes you you can't just decide oh i'm going to write about this and then ramble on because they'll get bored and they won't yeah. have to read it and then you will have wasted mm -hmm. your time writing it you know, right. I, I have had a kid one say to me, oh, it's a chapter book, it's a chapter book, I don't read chapter books. And I said to him, you sit down and look at it. <laughs> and then he said, oh, I can't do this. So they have, concept, they have preconceived ideas of chapter book being mm. long and boring. And, uh, you know, you don't want to do that. That definitely not. So, yeah. That's that's interesting. Uh, yeah, nobody likes to read the chapter books, even the school books, even if it is very interesting English book, if it's a lengthy chapter, yes, I, I never felt like uh, reading much through it. Now coming to Anandika, again, you get to, you know, choose one number between 1 to 10, not 3, 5, 4, 10 and 7. Let's go to the top, Devi. Number what? 1, it is. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Number one, yes, you have got the question. How important mm. are illustrations in a children's book? Uh, again, going by my experience of my children, very important. Um, so right. uh, like what Ginny was saying, taking from there again, a cue from there. Uh, like I told you, I have a 13 year old. But what my 13 year old likes to read is something which is not text heavy so you know it's not one shoe fits all um there are children i'm sure who far younger than her at the age of nine and eight who 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 are into chapter books and uh who are able to make that uh connection you know in their head they don't need those illustrations but mm -hmm. largely i think uh children do like illustrations you know it's it's get giving them an impetus sort of thing. Mm, uh, I think Ginny would be better uh, at this answering this because having the experience of doing it. So, yes, yes. So I think you should take. Ginny, would you like to take it? Sure, I would. Okay. Anandika, yeah. The illustrations are hugely important. I find with my kids' books up to about the age of I don't know seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And my 30-year-old daughter doesn't like to always read big blocks of text either without the odd picture in between. So yes, mine, mine still has hope. She's 13 then. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's that's an interesting, interesting views of both. And I'm so happy to hear both of your views from first-hand experience. Now we have Rahul joining us and let's we go give a big round of applause and let's welcome Rahul Sharma to the show. Welcome, Thank Rahul. Thank you so much. Yes, we have heard the stories of Ginny. We have heard the stories of Anandika, their first-hand experience of dealing with children. Yeah, Ginny spoke about how her grandchild was introduced to stories, how 
Adantika spoke about how her children, age 13 and 7, uh, treat books. So now I would like to hear from Rahul your first-hand experience on writing those 10 books, 10 best-selling children's books. How was your journey like and how do you feel now after that long journey for that being published? Your take on it, Rahul. Thank you, Devi. Uh, I would say I was lucky enough to have teachers in my school who taught us the stories, the various stories of courage, valor, stories of motivation, inspiration. And while you have these stories, like right now I'm in the age of 30s, so whenever I have struggle in my life, I would remind of those stories and I draw faith from these stories. So mm-hmm. the stories yes. you feed, stories you tell your kid, in this age, they will remain with them for years, for years to come. And because in us, we have still carrying that child. If you do not believe in your stories, then who else will? If you don't believe in yourself and how you can believe in yourself by through stories. Like if you are afraid of dark, you are afraid of, like I always afraid of speaking English. So my teacher used to tell me stories how one person who was afraid of some demon and while facing the demon, he was able to control or control the demon. So I learned that. Why not I can face this fear of speaking English? So I started Mm -hmm. applying those learnings and I felt I am a sum total of all the stories. And I feel stories, Mm -hmm. we are stories and here we are four storytellers. It's an example that if we are still alive in this pandemic, stories of hope, mm. inspiration, let us through. Okay, we heard the stories from our grandmother. Okay, once upon a time, we have mm. seen a kind of, uh, uh, you say, uh, God uh, things, stuff in the centuries, like a rainstorm. And now we are seeing, okay, they have gone through, we will get through this. Over to you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, Rahul, for giving the, that frank views on this uh, question. So it was so interesting to listen to your journey and the how stories, we can drop power from stories and express it in our uh, books. Now... We have an important announcement to make before going forward with the session. So we are having free giveaways of books of authors who are there in the Write With Us group. I'm waiting for that uh, poster to come up on the screen. So we have three authors who have released their books. Yes, there it is on the screen. First, the complete collected short stories. It is written by Aditya Sharma. The second book is Small Town, Bigger Dreams, written by Harito Srivastava. And I've read this book, and a very interesting book. And third is Contemplation for the Thinking Man by Anil Jalali. All three are writers, good writers in our group. And here they are giving the giveaways, giveaways to all our uh, readers, all our authors, storytellers out there. So these are the rules that you can see there. You sh- you need to buy and read the books before 15 September. Then tag the authors, Phoenix Litfest handles and three readers. And sh- once you share the review with us before 15 September 2021, you are in for a surprise. So these are free giveaway alerts for you. Go out there. Buy these books and share your frank reviews. What we are expecting is frank feedback. If you want something you want this author to improve upon, please feel free to share your frank feedback. So this is the free prize giveaway alert. The deadline is approaching 15 September. Go out there, buy their books. And the books are available on Amazon. And the third book by Anil Jalali is available on Notion Press. So, So let's Continue with the session now. The next question, again, it is to Rahul Sharma. Rahul, I want to understand from you, how do you decide the language and the tone that you need to use in a children's book? Because children 
books have different age group there you have children from the age group of 3 to 5 from 7 to 15 how do you decide that tone and that you know, voice to be used sometimes we get to write from our own point of view we are so used to writing our own kind of books like our own fiction books or blogs so if i take my example i'm so used to writing blogs how to decide that tone and language for the perfect children's book i feel at first you decide what is the age group 5 to 7 mm-hmm. 7 to 9 9 to 12 12 to 15 based on that you choose the kind of words you are going to use in your stories and before that you choose a theme sometimes it is very close to your heart like i have always been fascinated by stories of courage inspiration mm. so mm. i have a theme in my head so i will choose that theme and based on that i will use that language the words according to age group right right very very rightly put rahul now it is a open ended question all three of you can answer uh, these questions so for the question now is we see fantasy is a very common part of children's fiction but do you think too much of fantasy will take the children away from the reality they don't see the world on a realistic basis first i would start with jinni what is your take on it jinni i i think that you are right in some ways devi if that's all they read if they read a, a different selection of stuff then then they would have a more sort of balanced view but um mm-hmm. it's quite funny i'm not a big fan of fantasy even though i write it <laughs> so, <laughs> I, yeah. right um yeah i i i i think that it shouldn't be only fantasy that they read honestly speaking because it creates unrealistic expectations somewhere along the line yeah that's it what your view sanand dega yeah uh again i think uh, i agree with jimmy absolutely uh, excess of anything is bad as much as we would want to re, uh, you know run away from the reality of the world that we are living in at the moment uh but yes uh, to 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 let stories and books do uh, their job best you have to you know include almost everything in the diet um especially if we are talking about the children who are going to consume it so fantasy is good but then you cannot always uh, escape the reality uh, as as children probably they need to, uh, more guidance uh, you know maybe it is okay for adults to escape the reality once in a while but for children also as much as um, uh, reading fantasy would give wings to their creativity and imagination i think it has to be a balanced diet sort of thing um, with some some other stuff other genres thrown into it along with fantasy mm. yes yes i totally agree with jini as well as anandika i feel there should be balance of fantasy versus reality like if you are telling a story of fantasy how you can have a chirag and you will have your wishes true come true so at the same time you can share a few examples how you can try in your real life you can give them few exercises and that's how the real habits will build up right so i feel little bit of fantasy little bit of sprinkle of the practicality and with humor with uh, some real yes, facts is- yeah real fact like that boy you know i met that boy seeing your own story it how you being practical like i how i was able to grow up and learn how to speak well if i share my own story with my kids or with the other kids they would buy it okay theek hai like uh, okay it's it's possible it's possible so giving that fantasy away that is the way of uh, the uh, it's an art of for a storyteller how you make them plausible Okay, it is logical. It is possible. Let me try it. 
Yes. Jenny. Jenny, you have already uh, written 15 books, right? A uh, bit more than that, Raul, actually. <laughs> I, I, okay. have, I have succeeded in my series. You can see them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. What a then, uh, those, are, those are the published ones. And then I've probably written about another 10 <laughs> that I've self-published um, oh for children, yeah. Mainly for children. One one is an, an account of my episode that I I had a bit of a go with cancer a couple of years ago, and so I wrote a book about that. But I don't advise children to read it because the language isn't very good. <laughs> yeah. How would you explain while like uh, when you write your books, do you feel you're writing for yourself, your inner child? Uh, like or you write for the kids around you or like what's your first uh first thing comes to you okay okay it, it depends what i'm writing if i'm writing one of my civil books it's usually a subject that um that i want to get across to the children and i've thoroughly researched it so i i, I know what i'm writing about um but when i wrote my book about my cat our cat our family cat called jack the hooligan cat um that was complete fantasy mixed with family life and and i wrote it so that i enjoyed reading it you know and that that was how i wrote that yeah and and i i like to include a lot of humor in my books even even oh. my serious books they're funny so i feel if i can make somebody laugh then I, i've won you know because <laughs> if you remember something if it was funny and you remember it well that's great so yeah Okay, uh, we, we have a question uh, from the audience. How do we inspire kids to read and also write some stories? Uh, if anyone can take up, like An Anandika, if you would like to take up. <laughs> okay, I generally don't do very well with inspiration, but okay. Um, how do you inspire children to read and write? Of course, by giving them Mm, and the exposure by having books around, by creating that atmosphere, where, by setting up an example, by reading yourself. Uh, but uh, I don't think as a parent, I have found a short, short way to do it. You can only try, uh, you can only try with whatever, like I said, you know, making books available, ensuring that they have an exposure to different kind of genres be it comic books, and not just genres, the formats as well. There are graphic novels, um, which I see children taking up very, very well too. Um, so uh, there are comics, there are graphic novels, there are, there are, there is always, I'm a big, 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 um, uh, in big favor of introducing nonfiction, which somehow always gets, um, you know, uh, overshadowed by fiction and stories and everything, everything. So I think uh, uh, the only only thing that you can do to get your children to read or write is to expose them to different formats, different stories, different genres, uh, different styles of writing, different authors, and the rest is up to them. You know, and there, there, are, there are so many ways in which you can consume stories now that uh, I don't think that you, you, you anybody has to be um hung up about the fact that you know my child is not reading or not writing uh, so if the idea is to convey a message or to entertain or anything um you i think uh, the parent or whoever the the, the caregiver uh, the primary caregiver if he or she has the strength and energy to do it i think they play a very important role in by setting up an example by telling a story in such a way that it there's a connection that is established and your child would want to go and read it but I don't think there is a sure short way to do it not with my children I have I am, uh, I'm inspired to read more <laughs> <laughs> I'm inspired to read more so oh, that's good yeah that's I, I good. totally agree like when you this is something uh, like make child available all the kinds of books formats and yeah. let them explore these are the various forms to read graphic novels like we used to read Chacha Chaudhary and comics. Yeah, your graphic novels are what we've, we've consumed yeah. as comics. 
Yeah. From Captain Dhruv to Nagraj to Chacha Chaudhary to Pinky Billu, everything from Nandan to uh, you know uh, Kadambini. I don't know if if anybody still knows or remembers the names, uh, but uh, what you what you read uh, today as a graphic novel would probably classify into that. Maybe graphic novel has a very um, very stern. I don't know. It's my perception. It's a very stern. Uh, sound to it you know i don't i don't know how enjoyable graphic novels are but um, the comics have a lighter vein to them a lighter touch you know when you say the word comic it it, it automatically brings humor i don't know if graphic novels are in that way so yes but i do agree that different genres different authors different formats um, authors from different countries folk tales there is just so 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 much that you can do read and tell them to uh you know uh figure out for themselves it's it's a wide wide playing field and i think you should actually just let the child choose i don't think uh, a parent should dictate that uh how, what and how and very where. very interesting uh, take anandika there's a question coming from one of the audience member he is asking when you have huge video content content it will affect the uh you know book reading habits of children what is your take on it how has video content affected the book reading habit of children then you if you can choose to go for this question okay i jini would you I... like to take it up um no i i think tv in general and and online you know type so things have have stolen a lot of book reading from children i i do think that but um uh i i think my kids are too old to to comment on this now <laughs> so i somebody with younger kids could be better off commenting i think yeah uh yeah i think um uh if i can uh, answer that uh qualifying with the younger kids um so a lot of a lot of uh, things are demanding their time i think for today's generation for today's children a lot of things video content podcasts audios uh you know and even even if it is video content then there is such a wide range of video content that there, there are uh, these um amateur video makers there these people who try these uh, uh, i might sound very outdated but i i don't know what they are called uh, influencers sorry everyone have to remember that they they do these things they do <laughs> challenges yeah. and things like that so you know of course it's very enticing mm. that happening with my teen mm, uh, she would rather sit down and watch somebody do some crazy things you know putting his head in a bucket full of ice or something like that rather than pick up a book so <laughs> there is there are a lot of things that are making a demand on their time so i don't know it i think it's very unfair to the children as well but yes definitely definitely tv video content they have brought down the distractions you know when we were younger when we were children books were the only things that you could do or you could go out and play now you don't see children playing they're hooked to a device one device or the other device and um, so yes that has unfortunately impacted uh the reading the the habit of picking up a book a physical copy and reading it yeah do you want to add on uh are you uh, am i audible rahul yes 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 you are now audible Can, yes you, know, you want to add on to that about the video content versus reading of books i totally agree we have influencers we call them marketers like me who have your own products <laughs> to run we have who have your own work to do and what i feel like what i have done we have no newspapers coming it's 9 o'clock in our home for our years but now we have subscribed to it we have no television you can you have your phone and uh, mobile devices and we have made this habit from 
10 pm onwards no phones just books mm. and i would read the book along with them and this mm. is the habit we have inculcated and slowly again reading mm. takes time and i have seen the kids who have never touched the book over the years and now they are enjoying book and to my surprise one of my daughters she read 10 books in 10 days of 300 pages oh. of each book and i was amazed mm. oh my god it means we have to find that kind of genre what she likes mm. right mm. so you we can again we can experiment as you mentioned very well Anandika, like what kind of format i bought mm. different books and uh, i'm looking forward if we have Ginny's book in india or if we can have that book so it would be easier for like i love books and i bought uh, dozens of books in one go so that my kid can explore okay this one is better and let them explore let them get resolved in the reading the pleasure of reading and i feel it's the best way as a parent put your phone away and now it's reading time we read together yeah. Yeah. yes yes thank you thank you all for your valuable inputs now without wasting much time let me quickly go on to round three this round three i have named it as story round so what i'm going to do is one of you will start a story one of you will start a story by uh inculcating am i audible yes 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 you are one of you will start a story by inculcating a prop. I'll give a prop. The other one will continue the story by inculcating another prop or another item. Okay. I hope you've got the rules clear. Yes, yes, yes. I'll okay. start with Rahul. Rahul, you have to start a story by including pen, pen in it. The item pen in it. Fantastic. So once upon a time, yeah. there was a pen. Pan was very curious how to find the joy and he used to play around the ground and one day he met this amazing notebook and the notebook said to him, why not you express yourself before me? I am willing to listen to your thoughts. How come you can listen to my thoughts? Just give me a moment and you can start writing, expressing yourself over me. Okay, I can. Yes, you can. And then after that day, they stop. Rahul, okay. stop. Now the story will be continued by Anandika by including bottle in it. The same story <laughs> what Rahul started, continue by including a bottle in it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So all the physical labor <laughs> that the pen undertook made him very thirsty. And um, he went looking for something to quench his thirst and while he set out on a journey um, to quench his thirst uh, he came across a green water bottle and <laughs> so he asked the water bottle uh, my dear friend i'm very thirsty and is there any way in which you can help me and the green water bottle was uh, it turned towards the pen and said oh you want my help okay i have some magical powers but for that you'll need to tip we'll me. stop it there we'll stop it there anandika now it's to Ginny. Ginny will continue the story by involving a cat in it if you can involve your own cat cat oh, jack you can involve jack in it okay so jack saw the pen standing by the bottle and he thought oh i wonder if this pen tastes good and the pen was saying to the bottle no 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 don't eat me please don't eat me i won't take it anymore i'm gonna run away the cat said, Wait, and he gave the pen a little pat with his paw and he patted the pen straight into the bottle and the pen got its drink after all and jack Yay. sat there staring sadly into the bottle because the pen was gone and he couldn't get it <laughs> <laughs> that's 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 amazing how three people with three viewpoints weave the story and it turned out so well i think these imagination these thoughts that's what give birth to children's stories let's give our fans
panel is a big round of applause that was a wonderfully crafted and a very interesting story that was impromptu on the spot you came out with the story i really loved each one of your viewpoints now we, we it's time would, for the love to see it <laughs> in print the next time <laughs> Yes, hopefully, hopefully we can we can come out with these stories in the print. Now we will move on to the last and final round. That is the the fun segment. That is you are. I am going to shoot questions to you, and it's a rapid fire round. You can just take less than thirty seconds to answer this question. Five questions to each of you. Who wants to be the first person? Yeah, the first. Yes, it's Ginny. <laughs> <laughs> so, Ginny, who is your favorite cartoon character? Ah, uh, definitely Bugs Bunny. Wow, Bugs okay. Bunny, mine too. <laughs> you want to be a child or want to be an adult? I would not swap being an adult for anything. No. <laughs> no. Okay. And with the day I. Wow, that's that's even I would want to be a child. Child, what is what do you love, writing or editing your work? I I love writing. Yeah, I do. I love writing. It it makes me whole. I the words just carry on in my head all the time. So yeah, I love writing. Right, right. And who is your favorite children's story writer? Except you. Who is your favorite okay. children's story my, writer? My all time favorite is Roald Dahl. And Doctor Seuss; mm -hmm. those are my favorites. I I love them. Right, right. Yeah. Right, right. Thank you, thank you, Jenny. And the last question to you is: What is your favorite dialogue from a children's story book? If you can recollect. Um, no, no, I'm too old for that, baby. <laughs> but you're something like not the cat in the hat, but I can't. The words fail me at the moment. Sorry. <laughs> that's 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 totally fine. Fine, Jenny. Thank you so much for supportively answering this question. Let's give a big round of applause for Jenny Stone. Next, we will take the questions from Anandika. We will ask her the questions. So here goes the rapid round with. Anandika Sood, number one. What is one of the craziest fact about you? <laughs> I can laugh at anything. I find humor in every situation. So that's that's a, that's a very interesting fact. If you can find humor in even the most depressing situation, I think that shows a lot about you. That shows what a sportive person you are. That's a very interesting fact, Anandika. I'm a crazy one what also is... because you asked me for a crazy fact. <laughs> One next question is toughest criticism you have ever received in your life. Ooh, that burns. Toughest criticism, <laughs> uh, um, and I'm hoping we are keeping it to stories. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> I, I wrote a, a novella and I showed it to. Uh, uh, I, I am a journalist by training. I've studied mass communication, mm -hmm. and. Um, Uh, I worked with the. I've had the opportunity of working with wonderful editors. Um, so I showed it to my ex editor, and he said that you know you should really put it to the bin. You think this book is just so <laughs> funny? So that's that's a very worst, frank. Frank, uh, the worst and the most helpful criticism that has been, and I I slaughtered the book and rewrote it again and everything, everything, everything. But yeah, that, that brings me to the next question. What is the yeah. best compliment you received? Uh, uh, about my writing, right? Yep. Uh, about my writing, I've been very fortunate. I've been uh, very fortunate to have been told this repeatedly that I, uh, I managed to uh, touch hearts. I managed to find resonance with a lot of people. um especially uh, the the work that i do in the parenting sector i um, mm -hmm. i i feel i think that is the best compliment that i can find that, that some parent can find their pain or their joy or their sorrow or their struggle uh, they can find a resonance in right my so yeah right right thank you thank you anandika the next question is which is your favorite childhood book <clears throat> 
Oh, too many, too many, too many. That's a very, very difficult one to answer. <laughs> one or two. You can mention one or two. Um. So my childhood favorite uh, uh, was. Um, uh really do you have to do this make me choose <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's okay that's fine totally fine okay. i'll yeah that's totally fine i'll post my next question do yes, you like please. heroes or villains more in the book so i think baby uh, by the time uh, you are as grown up <laughs> as i am which is <laughs> 40 uh you really don't see people any longer as white and black you know as heroes and villains mm. you begin to recognize the grays and then uh if you happen to be empathetic you know if you if you happen to be somebody who's mm. willing to give everybody a chance then you really don't see any heroes anywhere or any villains anywhere mm. as mm-hmm. dark as it might be in a book as dark as it might be in a book you know you're always willing to give them that that little uh that little uh, benefit of doubt that if if the villain you know and i don't know why but the batman and the joker are coming to my head when <laughs> they call uh, the batman the hero hero per se by the definition of hero and you can't call the joker an absolute evil uh you know um villain uh mm-hmm. so both of them have their own uh, charms and intrigues so mm-hmm. that's, that's very well put that's yeah <laughs> thank you so much anandika for answering the question so mm-hmm. let's give a big round of applause for anandika thank now, you now we will take questions or we'll post questions to our last panelist that is rahul sharma so rahul ready for the grilling yes <laughs> yes So the first question to you is: Do you like online books or in-store or paperback books? Paperback books. Why Physical so? Uh, you can feel like you open the pages <laughs> and you smell, and you feel the pages. Right. You feel the print. That's the first thing I do as a reader. Right, right, right. That's that's a frank, frank feedback, uh, Rahul. So our next question is: What is one of the weirdest thing you have used as a bookmark? So to keep the pages, to keep you updated on the pages uh, where you stopped. So what bookmark? Weirdest bookmark that you have used? Okay, I uh, like if I have this newspaper, anything, I will just take it and put it as a bookmark. Wow, <laughs> that's that's good. Yeah, yeah, anything, anything. Yes, yes, and. Next question: Do you judge a book by its cover? Uh, I judge a book by its summary. Like summary. Okay. okay. <laughs> yep. That's very well put. So, suppose a book is released and its movie or TV show is also released. Which one do you prefer, a book or its movie show or its uh, or movie or its TV show? What do you prefer? Movie, TV show, or book or Sam yes confused. a book a book or its movies or that book made into a movie or that book made into a tv series everything, which everything. one do you prefer I everything right maybe i would watch tv show and then i would go for book okay now let me explore what happened what they missed out right right the last question is do you like stand alone books like only one part one story finish or do you like a series of books like a uh, a murder mystery happening again your continuation of that a sequel of that you like a series of books or just a one stand alone book no it depends upon if i'm writing a roman genre if i'm writing like a uh, different books sci-fi book so based on that mm-hmm. if i need mm-hmm. to read uh, such kind of genre so i would read four to five books of same genre and then i would move to different mm-hmm. genre So on right. the mood as well. On the mood as well. Like if you're not in mood to read, right. so I would switch to a different something different. Right, right, right. Thank you so much, Rahul, for your input. Once again, let's give a big round of applause for Rahul for having sportively attended these questions. So now here we come to the end of this fruitful session. I've had a lot of interesting takeaways, inputs from Ginny. That the first-hand inputs from Ginny and Anandika, and also from Rahul. 
it was interesting to see how the minds of children story writers work how illustrations are important how point of view is important so i would like to express my gratitude to all the panelists who joined us today jini all the way from south africa anandika and rahul for having given us the valuable time and given the inputs and i would also like to apologize because i had so many technical issues at my end the net was going down but i'm sure the show went on and we could have the discussion going thank you all for joining us for sharing your time and would like to see you more and more in our upcoming sessions thank you so much everybody i'll take a leave here until we see next week it's bye from me devi and it's also bye from all the panelists out here and we can see them in the upcoming session as well bye everybody thank you for bye your valuable everybody. time thank you so thank much thank you for having us thank you bye so bye. much thank you very much bye bye bye, bye.